Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play! Today we're taking a look at Warhammer Underworld's Nether Maze, the new season of Warhammer Underworld's, where we go deeper than Harrody, down into the shadowy realms of Ulgu, into a madness-inspired, ever-shifting route labyrinth called uh, the Nether Maze. We're joining two different warbands. We have a Skaven Assassin warband from Clan Eshin, and um, some of the Marathi Kane's like Shadow Shroud Master, Shroud Stalkers, the, the Assassin core basically, uh, that were first introduced in Warcry Catacombs. So we'll show you the table. Uh, we're gonna go through the warbands real fast and we'll get this underway. There it is, the Nether Maze box contents. Um, we got it all laid out and ready to go. Um, and this just showed up, so we're just gonna dive in and, and play even though the models aren't painted yet, because conveniently, as per usual with uh, uh, the Underworld stuff, everything comes in beautiful colored plastic. So um, for the two warbands, we have the, uh, the push fit sort of like options and stuff as well. Um, and with the elves, it is the Shadeborn. Uh, we have Slythale Shade Stalker here with her cool kill stick and stabber. Um, her abilities are uh, that she is um, able to basically shadow ambush. So if she's on a side hex or in cover, uh, when she makes a charge action, she can make a charge action to any other side hex or cover. And with a two range, two hammer, two damage malleable weapon, um, in the declare attack action step, she can pick cleave in the, or ensnare as her... Uh, her like um, skill for it. So she can ignore shields or ignore dodges. She's pretty good at killing stuff. Um, she also gets to inspire when she attacks someone who's already wounded. So the low damage is pretty cool because you don't actually want to kill anybody. You want to be able to wound somebody then attack again potentially and then inspire. You know, so for Warband, we got Drusilla Viserax. Um, she's an assassin with a glaive and dagger. Now she's um, kind of like a witch elf. Her whole jam is she has shadow mark. She can reroll a defense dice if she's in cover. Um, she has the same inspire condition, and she's got a two range, uh, three swords, two damage attack. And she, uh, when she inspires, that same attack gains um, uh, a new sort of like status of three damage. And the whirling blades attack unlocks, which is a grievous scything two hammer for one damage attack. Um, she also has. Um, uh, I think an extra dodge on that side too. Not a bad inspire for her. Um, when Slythiel inspires, she gets grievous on her malleable weapons, although the damage doesn't go up. So she gets crit extra damage. Uh, for Velissa, oh, I think her defense also goes up. No, it stays the same. It's already at two. Uh, for Velissa, which is the other little assassin with knives, she's got Shade Stalker Dagger with combo. Um, if she, uh, as a reaction after this um, fighter successful attack action with combo, make this attack action so she can do puncturing follow up. So she has a three dice one damage followed by a two hammer one damage um, with the, the flurry key there. Shadow Mark. Um, everybody's got the same core stats here, so four movement, three health, one dodge. And when she inspires, which is the same inspire thing, she gets an extra dodge, um, and she gains cleave on her punctuating follow up and grievous on the daggers. Silark Greyblood, which is our non leader wizard, um, he's got the wizard key mark here, and his cruel blades are two hammers for two damage, and repeater hambo with a three range, uh, three swords for one damage. Now he's a spell action as well, which is Lamprey. If cast, choose one enemy fighter with no wound counters within four hexes of the caster and or unlimited range if they're in a cover hex. Deal damage to that fighter. And then Shadow Mark is the same. He can reroll a defense dice when he's in cover. Um, when he inspires, he gains ensnare on his hand bow, which is pretty cool, so he can cancel dodges. Uh, and that's really it. Dodge value goes up as well. So that's the Warband. We're gonna discover, we're gonna just discover our um, rivals deck as we go, but the objectives we got a vicious kill, all is shadow, coiling darkness, fighting in the shade, nowhere to hide, prolong the inevitable, sadistic tendencies, savor the kill, the shadows deepen, strike the head, umbral raid, and unseen malice. So no holds here, no standard universals. Uh, which is pretty pretty common now for the Rivals deck. And then power cards, we got Abyssal Guidance, Abyssal Summoning, Aided by Darkness, Amulet of Gathering, Darkness, Dusk Lure Bracers as an upgrade, Impenetrable Darkness, Gloom Web Hex, Mask of Shadowed, Mirrors, Rapid Fire, Rippling Darkness, Ruthless Aim, Shade Stalker Darts, um, Shade Walker, Shadow Binding, Smoke and Mirrors, Suffocating Shadows, Tenebral Manipulation, Vanish into the Gloom, Umbral Glaive, and Voidling. And here's Skitter Ska Shank. Skitter Shank. Skitter Shank's claw pack. Um, they are a five model crew, an extra health total. So if you look at health pools, uh, there is 13 total health over here, 14 for the rats. Uh, we got two sort of jobbers, two sort of utility characters, and a leader. The leader, of course, is going to be Slink Skittershank. 
Uh, five movement, two dodge, and a four health pool. Grievous already on the paired weaving blades. So three dice swords with Grievous. He can inspire for four dice swords with Grievous. And um, that's really it. That's his big change. Uh, his inspires. One or more enemy leaders are out of action, or an enemy leader has four more wound counters. So basically everyone will inspire. Uh, I think if, if you kill the enemy leader, or the enemy leader has four more wound counters. Which means that big leaders like um, uh, the, the Ogre or, or uh, Molog can still, you can still get your Inspire off even though you don't have to like eight health damage. And then Mark for Death, you can reroll one attack dice in the attack rolls for his fighters attack actions if they target a leader. So he's good at killing leaders. And then he inspires and just gains Grievous. Utility characters, we got Creep Kin Whisper. Um, he is armed with uh, this cool net that he can throw at people. So he's got five movement, two dodge, and three health. His Trifang Triskelin net is two uh, hammers with barbs. Now barbs are reaction. After this attack action is successful, give the target a net counter. After a fighter with one or more net counters makes a move action, deal a damage to them and remove the net. At the end of the round, remove all net counters. So basically, he makes people unable to move without taking damage. Same Inspire as um, Slink. And then when he Inspires, he gets Grievous on his net um, and keeps barbs. Snip Padpaw has a Sword and Fighting Claw, which is three swords and two damage. Same Inspires as everybody else. Mark for Death is the same. He actually has it, uh, but Creep doesn't. So he gets the same rerolls against leaders, which is nice. Uh, and then his... Um, uh, smoke bombs are a reaction. Use this after this fighter's activation. If you do, stagger each enemy adjacent. So stagger is awesome and allows you to gain um, bonuses. Basically, it's a debuff. They lose guard um, and you gain bonuses when you attack them. So it's a nice reaction to be able to stagger people. And it's just a reaction. It doesn't cost you any action. So you can run up and do it. Job squad, we got Skulk, who's a minion. Five move, one dodge, two health uh, with his sling. Three range, two dice with one damage. Uh, same Inspire. When he Inspires, it gains Stagger, which is cool. Hit him in the head with a rock. And then Crouched, a minion. Uh, same core stats. And then two swords for two damage. And nothing special. Bladed Tonfa and Dagger. Literally nothing special. Both Inspire for an extra dodge. Otherwise, Armed to the Fangs. Collateral damage. Daggers in the dock. Dazed and confused. Impressive students and infiltrate their lair. Killer Supreme. It's like Beef Supreme, but, you know with murder. Rattled, unsurprising fate, way of the hidden paw, way of the lashing tail, and way of the striking fang. So I'm, I'm, liking the, I'm liking the ways of stuff in here. But again, no universal holds or anything like that. Power cards, closing in for the kill. Deathmaster, Eshin throwing stars upgrade. The face gouger fangs upgrade. Gas mask upgrade. Merciless, misplaced optimism. I do love the name of all the Skaven cards. Poison traps, Prince Altail, and probing attack. Redirected attack, ricocheting Triskel, Shadow Paw, Skittering Blur, Spitting Cobra Technique, Spy Rats, Supernatural Agility, Sweep the Leg. Ha <laughs> ha, sweep the leg, Daniel. And then Way of the Iron Paw, Way of the Slinking Rat. Uh, and that is our rivals decks to go down against each other. So the uh, the boards themselves are pretty cool. Lots of like options. We got a single cover and a um, lethal hex on this one. And you can see here it's very like, it's very Idenethy in Olgu. Like, I don't know, it's got a weird Lovecraft Cthulhu Idna thing going on here in the Deep Dark Sea. Uh, this one's a little less fishy, more bones, but double cover, lethal, and cover. This is one that the, the uh, Shadow Elves clearly want versus this one with less color, cover and less lethal hexes. Um, this one too, two cover and two lethals, great for the Shadow Elves. And this one a little more bare. So Mike probably wanted to use the boards that have less of the stuff I'm using on it and me trying to put them down with cover and lethals. You get the usual gubbins as well. You get some gloom counters, which are the additional uh, terrain, which I think have impact on certain special rules, especially for the elves. You get your five objectives, you get your multiplayer objectives over here as well. Guard, damage, um, your glory. Uh, these are called, oh geez, I've forgotten what they're called now, but they're the special status tokens for this box set. Your scatter token, um, and then extra cards. So extra universal cards, but we're just gonna be playing rivals. So I'm not super worried about that. Uh, and these are the Grand Alliance cards as well. Let's take them for a test drive. Pretty new dice. All right, rolling out for board placement. I got a single crate. And you nope. didn't get any, you got one support. So I get to pick the f uh, first board and you get to define the battlefield. Picking this one, you define the board with just a slightly less lethal hex. Um, and they have to have at least four 
We got five adjacent hexes. All right, we're dealing out now our objective tokens. So I get three, you get two. I place the first one, not adjacent, or it's not honest, uh, a train hex basically, or starting hex, and not within one of a board edge. So we're gonna go like meow. Let's go here. Okay, uh, let's go there. I don't think any of our objective decks actually have anything to do with these tokens, so it's sort of irrelevant. Uh, and then we each get to place, starting with me, a shadow token, and I do think these are important. Uh, they can be placed just outside of one of anything, so I'm gonna put one there. I just cover. We'll go way back here. Is that okay? No. I think, so for those ones, uh, the exception this feature can be placed within one of other feature tokens, but still not within one of the edge. Okay. Go there and make a okay, objectives flip, and the shadow tokens are double sided, so oh, right. they will just stay the way they are. Yep, and that's us. So, literally, none of our objectives care about the objective tokens, so it's just a formality, really. Now, it's draw cards. Right, so, here are my objectives for round one, and here's my power hand. Whoa, round dice to one, and we roll off again for deployment. I got Mm, double supports. <laughs> so if you get a support or a crit, you get to make me go first. So you get supports. Right. Deploy first, or you can deploy first. Yeah, why don't you go ahead? Okay. I like this one. I'm glad it's going front. Really, that's, that's, there we go. <laughs> We're going front and center. Uh, let's go with Machine Gun Murder Man. Fan Machine Gun Murder Man. Our test game, he was quite spectacular. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Meow. And yeah. Assess. All right. Round one. Into the breach. Uh, I got a nothing. Oh, uh, looks like you get the objective if you want it. Yeah. I had one crit to my roll, but that didn't matter because I finished putting my guys down first. Get to it. Four actions in the turn. Yeah. Good charge. Yep. One, two, three. Four, five. And drop out some staggers. And he's going to attack your leader. As you do. Because Bill's got two defense looking for dodges. You've got two dice or three dice looking for daggers. And this is your inspire condition. Because you attack the leader. Nope. This is uh only the chumps get to inspire. Oh that's right, that's right, that's right. You have to do damage or kill me. I got nothing. I I'm okay. Bombs. So smoke bomb, everybody's staggered. Now staggered means that I would lose guard if I had it, and you get um, a reroll against me? Yeah, I get to reroll an attack die against you. Okay. Oh, let's already that. Oh, sorry. Go away at the end of the turn. Well then, Faze, you want to play any power cards? <laughs> so, I'm going to... Hmm. I think I'm just going to make an attack action with Velissa. She's really into flurrying, so three guys looking for swords, doing one damage, but it does trigger combo. Take a stab. I got a crit. And all the supports, because I'm surrounding you with guys. I got none. Okay, so I do one, and that'll trigger combo. It's flurry, so now it's two looking for hammers. Wounded, so I will inspire after this. I got a hammer. I'm good. I got she inspires. Uh, well, let's do, I guess, we're going to drop Shade Stalker Darts. Choose a friendly Drusilla or a friendly Velissa. They get to make a falling attack action. So three looking for swords attack. Take it with Drusilla, because this way she can inspire. So she's got three looking for swords. I get the supports. That's two successes. Nope. Alright, so you take a damage. And she'll inspire because you're damaged. That's action the first. Okay. Let's do... Are you going to charge? Yeah. He's going to charge there. No, no. Oh no. One, two, three, four, and five. Off you go. Off you go. Make the charge. And... I'm staggered, so you can roll one against me. 
Like You're looking for swords from your leader to mine. Whoops. <laughs> sure, yeah. And yes, I get to reroll one because it's your leader. And I'm staggered. And so reroll two. I will reroll two of those. That's good. Crit. I also crit. Crit. Uh, I don't have enough support to help. So That's no push. Power yeah. cards. Uh, yep. Yeah. Skittering blur. In the next activation phase, attack actions cannot target friendly assassins. Cool. Well then, uh, I can attack assassins, which makes this pretty easy to figure out what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna charge to there. And I'm gonna shoot a gun into this little guy. Three bullets, looking for swords. There's one. Uh, my little guy. Well, I can reroll one because I'm in the shadows too. Always in the shadows. No, just one. Ha. Laughs. He's all done. Power step, you're first, I'm first. Uh, I'm first. I have... Hmm, no desire to do anything. Well, uh, closing in for the kill. I'm gonna push this guy two spaces closer to a staggered enemy. One, two. Yes, that'll work. And then... Nothing for you? Good. All right, I'm gonna charge her. Who <laughs> you gonna charge? I'm gonna charge your leader again. Okay. One, two, three, four. Ow! Oh, take a damage. Told you I'm all in on this. I can oh, see. That's, uh, that's this one. Uh, and now he is. Oh, I'll give you a net counter if I succeed on the attack. Got it. Go for it. Uh, so it's two dice. Like you, have, you have support now. Uh, crit and a hit. Oof. I crit and I have no support. So you win by one. I do. So How much you damage? Take a whole damage. Okay. And you get a barb counter. Okay. Or a reaction. That's right. Uh, give the target a net counter. If you make a move action, you take one damage. Got it. The way of the lashing tail. Score this immediately after an activation step if three or more friendly fighters are adjacent to the same enemy fighter. Are uh, you playing a power card? Or are you gonna buy an upgrade? Yeah, why not? I'm gonna upgrade my leader okay. with Merciless. Uh, plus one damage to this fighter's range one or range two attacks if the target is staggered. Cool. Gas mask? Why yep. not? So this fighter cannot be staggered, dealt damage by lethal hexes, and cannot be chosen or damaged by gambits. That's pretty cool. Well, I think we go with the boss. She's going to charge. Mm, do I want to charge? Or do I just want to attack? I think I just want to attack whoever that is. Okay. Mr. Barbs. Mr. Barbs? Uh, well, let's do some murder. Mr. Barbs is going to eat two looking for hammers. I will make it uh, in snare, so you lose your dodges. And I will crit. I need a crit. I did not get one. So take two. Uh, that'll kill. So that'll earn me a glory. Yes. And... I am then going to... I think by Abyssal Guidance. I'm gonna buy Voidling for one. Uh, upgrade Denizen. Uh, roll a uh, basically if I'm in cover or you're adjacent or in cover, then my successes are always counting as supported. I guess it's gonna be a kamikaze minion time. And get me line of sight to her. It's center to center for range defense, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I guess I could worry about anybody else in your crew at all, but I don't want to. <laughs> so, okay. kamikaze minion. Makes One, it inspire two, at least. Three, four. That's sweet. Half dead. Makes the explode. And you get to reroll one of these because I am staggered. Oh, I attacked a wounded model. Sorry, so I'm inspired. So still two looking for dodges. 
Get one. Just one. Okay. Uh, and I've got two looking for dodges. Nope. Take one. Take two. Take two. I got one left. He's also inspired. Still not very dangerous. Okay. Well, I think I just charge. Charge with. Oh, let's say the inspired flurry cleave follow up Velissa. So she's going to go one. And be charging and attack him. So I've got three looking for uh, swords, and it's Grievous. Uh, I got the support and the double support. Yeah. And I'm in cover, so I can reroll Shadow Ambush. Got a crit. Oh dear. Just need two crits. Nope, super dead. <laughs> okay. That's gonna give me a vicious kill. Kill of vulnerable one. Two glory. And then I'm gonna buy Abyssal Guidance, which is uh, reroll one attack dice in attack actions whenever I'm in a cover hex. I'll buy that for. Yeah, Felissa. And power cards, I'm gonna play Smoke and Mirrors. Uh, choose two friendly fighters, one uh, or more of which is in a cover hex, and place them. In Hex, it was occupied by the other fighter when you chose them. So I'm going to teleport these two. Uh, end phase, unless you want to play a power card. Nope, I uh, do not. Okay, so I'm going to score Prolong the Inevitable. Score this in end phase if one or more friendly fighters is adjacent to one or more vulnerable fighters, and he's vulnerable. Mm -hmm. That's going to give me two. And then uh, Coiling Darkness, dual. Score this in end phase if two or more friendly fighters are in cover hexes, which they are, um, and one or more of them made an attack action this round, they both did. I'm gonna score two more. That'll take me to seven. Views. Score this in an end phase if more enemy fighters have one or more stagger tokens, and there are surviving enemy fighters that have no yeah, surviving. So, enemy yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so him, him not having one. Got it. Lots of all the stagger tokens. <laughs> yep. So you'll score uh, two as well. I score two there. Put your four. And that is that. Okay. Round Draw two. Four more power cards and three more objective cards. And these. Right, top of two, let's see who's going first. I got a support. Yeah, I win. Crit, it's all you. I'm gonna see if one of my minions can do it. Okay. Come on, skulk. Get him, Skulk! You got it, this. He's the skulkiest. One, two, three, four... I don't even need to get adjacent to you, but uh, it doesn't help anyway. So... Charge action. One, two, three, four. Eh, just so you can't go into that cover. That's fair. Uh, <laughs> you seem to like this stuff. I do. Uh, it's it's my favorite. And the attack is two dice looking for hammers. Nope. I dodged. Talk and talk. Uh, actually, I succeed on that too because I'm in cover. Can you play any power cards? Uh, am I? Yes. Do I know where they are? No. There yeah, they are. I'm going to upgrade my boss again. Cool, cool. Uh, he's going to get agility for plus one. I'm going to play Tenebral Manipulation. Give one fighter a shadow counter. So I'm going to give a shadow counter to this guy. Upgrade your boss. Sweet. With... Uh, Deathmaster. Now he has move plus one and double supports are successes on his attack rolls. I'm gonna play Rippling Darkness. Choose an enemy model in cover. Give him a damage token. Damage that guy. Ow. Inspired though, because you attack my boss. That's right. <clears throat> well, I'm gonna. You got anything else you wanna do? Um. Yeah. Poison Domain. Or Poison Traps is a domain card, so this will stay in play until the end of the round. Uh. If you move, I can make a reaction, I roll a die on a hammer, I stagger you. Okay, I'm going to buy Aided by Darkness. Um, it is plus one damage to my range one and two attack actions if I'm in cover. I'm going to put it on her. Else you got? Nope, that's okay. it for now. I'm going to buy Shade Walker to give my boss... Actually, not my boss. I'm going to give my... Same lady? No, I'm going to give Drusilla. 
Uh, plus one move in flight. First action, we're gonna go with Velissa. She's inspired. She's gonna attack this little guy. No, oh. she's gonna attack this big guy. Uh, with her Shade Stalker Dagger. It's Grievous and Combo. Now you can dodge this. I have the, uh... Yep. Yeah. Just Grievous. So three dice looking for crits. Uh, I get a sword. That's all I get. Looking for a dodge or a support or oh, something. I can re-roll as well because of um, being in cover. So I just got I one hit. I failed anyway. So just one damage? Yeah. Um, oh, I can reroll another attack die because of Abyssal Guidance, just to see if I get the crit. I don't. It's two damage because of Aided by Darkness, because I'm in cover. Yeah, actually, I get to reroll all the dice. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I get to combo, um, and I'll combo into your boss again. Okay. Uh, this is two dice looking for hammers now. Double hammers. Do something. Uh, two, two successes. Okay, uh, I guess I could reroll both of these. Nope. And that's rolled on? Yeah. I don't really have anything I want to play in the power step. No, I'm good. Okay. Do I, oh. mm, do I have something I want to play in the power step? No, I'm good. Look at my boss. Sweep oh, no. the leg, Danny. She's Sweep leg. the leg. Uh, and then I'm going to have my little chump go charge her. That's Let's right. See if he can't take her out. I think. Or do I just let my boss go? I'm just gonna let my boss go. He's just gonna take an attack action. Yes, sir. Targeting her. Okay. So I've got two looking for dodges. So just two dice. Okay. Or three. Nope. I'm looking at the wrong stats. Three dice. Looking for daggers. Crit and. Nothing. Okay. And I got a crit and a success. Well, she's just going to go again, I guess. Yeah. Unless you have a power card you want to play. Uh, I don't. Okay, she's going to go again. Uh, she's going to swing into the little guy. She's got three dice looking for swords into him. I'll ambush, three roll die, and Abyssal Guidance because I'm in cover. Two hits. Uh, one one dodge. success. So it takes two. And that's a glory. There's Flurry, so attack the boss. Yep. And that's two looking for hammers now. I'll reroll them both because I have Abyssal Guidance plus Ambush. Got one hammer. You're good. <laughs> Kill her again. Gotta, gotta do something here. All right, go for it. Does nothing. I also get nothing. No, I get a success because I'm in cover. Oh, we just attacked the boss again, I guess, with her. Yep. <laughs> Your boss. I got two successes and I can reroll one. I got two successes. I died, I think. Two damage, yep. Oh, two, yep, I died. That's a glory. That's it. That's, uh, all right, I got to... Uh, draw? Can I draw something, I guess? Me. My turn, okay. Um, I'm going to do my final action here. I'm going to use my boss to stab you. I get supports because of my Voidling. I've, that's a pretty good roll. Ah, uh, but I have two defense dice. So. Ah, you do. You could ultimate crit. Uh, no. Not enough. She's dead. Um, and then power phase, I'm going to play Vanish into the Gloom, choose a fighter with no charge tokens, and place them in a cover hex. To go over there. And then end phase. Aha! Uh -huh. I've scored unsurprising <laughs> fate because a minion is dead. <laughs> what I are you gonna do? <laughs> I scored sadistic tendencies because I killed three or more fighters for one. Um, I scored the shadow deepens. Each surviving fighter is in a cover hex because he's not the the thing for two more. And then I got all his shadow. Uh, oh, sorry, I can't get that one until the third end phase. And new turn. You I, just uh, draw I know and play power cards. You technically get a whole turn. You, to you actually score. do, and, and you just and you just draw cards. I literally have nothing I can score in this. Uh, uh, four or five. All right, so I'll just draw two cards, and I'll see if any of this matters. Uh, I buy all the upgrades during my turn for everybody. Do I have any gambits I can do here? Uh, everybody gets a shadow counter, so she gets a shadow counter back. And then I spend the turn cycling for objectives. So that one's going to score the third turn. Uh, I can't score that one because I can't use the shadow ability. I can't score that one either. So I just spend two actions drawing cards. I look for score if the leader's taking an action. I can't get that one. Umbral Raid. 
Uh, I could get this one for my second one, and so in my last two actions, I would just move and move. Oh, no, I wouldn't want to do that, actually, because I need to get to cover. I need to go one, two, three, four, and then she could go one, two, three, four, because she'll carry her cover with her. I'm getting Umbral Raid for two at the end, and all the shadow for three, and that gives me five more, so that'll be Here, six. You can have my five. <laughs> 10, <laughs> 12, <laughs> 17 to five at the end of the game. Well, that was a, uh, yeah, that was a, you couldn't seal the deal on, uh, who was it this time around? Valissa, when she inspired. Uh, it is interesting how I had a different star in each of these games. When we put our practice game, this guy managed to get out some upgrades you guys didn't see, which was rapid fire, and, which means he can make two attack actions when he uses hand bow. And then ruthless aim, when models are vulnerable, he gets plus two attack dice. He ends up with a five dice attack bow. Um, and I think when he inspires, he gets grievous. I was just in snare, so he ignores cover, or he ignores um, dodges as well. Uh, it was uh, it was silly. He was machine gunning guys down and then just sitting in cover and not able to die. Uh, and in this game, it was the combo attack. The combo attack with Grievous is pretty great. And as soon as you got Abyssal Guidance and Aided by Darkness on it, she becomes pretty killy because she's damaged two with two attack actions um, with a bunch of rerolls too because she's just sitting in her own cover. She's bringing it with her. So very... It's funny how durable the elves are. You don't think of them as being durable, but all with three health. Um, they're relatively mobile. Uh, the boss is kind of squishy, but it's hard to go in on them and finish them off because of all the cover shenanigans they end up bringing with them. Uh, the Skaven, though, uh, definitely a lot of like non-interactive abilities. Like the being able to stagger everybody in the first turn was amazing, and it scored you some stuff early on. But you couldn't just hang on to the league for the uh, th the rest of it because once you start losing pieces, like losing that ability to auto ensnare, kind of takes a bunch of it out. To rate the warbands, I would say that the elves are the easy. <laughs> ironically, the elves are the easier the ones to learn with bit more of a glass cannon over here and they're kind of reliant for some of their rivals cards on specific pieces like the smoke bombs to get the um, everybody having a stagger token um, objective card off so you're, you're wanting to get that in your hand early and then use it at the opportune time before he dies because everyone's relatively easy to kill uh, and then there's the gimme cards like having your minions die during the right turn when you have a dead minion to have that in your hand as well so uh, they're a bit more set up telegraphy. These guys can respond a little bit better and their pieces become a little bit individually more tough as the game goes on. Neat new mechanics, lots of great models in the box and I'm excited for more Underworlds. I haven't played Underworlds since Beast Grave and that was a long time ago. I do like the Rivals format, being able to kind of flatten down the cards. I'm not into deck building games. I'd much rather just play with different warbands if I want to change up my game. So this is, this is definitely right for me and I'm gonna pay up the rest of the warbands and give them a try. So there you go, a first look at Nether Maze, the most recent Warhammer Underworlds two-player starter set up for pre-order today. Um, and yeah, that is neat. I like the new Warbands. I think that they're kind of dynamic, like they have some speed, some killiness, lots of cool shenanigans, and I do love the idea of Rivals decks. I'm not into deck building. I don't like having to sit and buy every card and think about what they're all gonna do. So the Rivals format is perfect for me. Um, and yeah, you'll see more of me playing this in the future. Uh, and I'm excited to play like with the older Warbands too, sort of thrown in using the, um, the Rivals sort of like upgrade pack that brings them up to the current format. So big thanks for watching. We'll see you for more um, Underworlds in the future. It's on a mash. How about Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look through the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Game of Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.